coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. The recent cold snap that hit Utah has frozen Utah's upper elevation reservoirs. Biggest one I've caught all day. The hunt for big tiger trout and cutthroat at Schofield Reservoir. I'm Adam Eakle and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Well, it is a frosty morning here in Utah. Mickey, <laughs> I can see my breath. That, that means it's ice fishing. <laughs> it's time. Let's go. All right, we got a big group. Where should we go? Let's head to Schofield and, and go for one of those giant tigers. A group like this, we're going to get one this big today. <laughs> <laughs> Tell fish stories already, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's hit the road. Let's go. Minus three degrees. <laughs> it's cold. This is my first trip for the year on the ice. Hopefully we'll get some of those big tigers. I'm excited. It's about eight inches thick. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold up here too. No slush on top. Yeah, plenty of ice to fish on. Fishing's been great. A lot of these guys are catching a lot of cutthroat in the uh, 12 to 15 inch range. There he is. Got him. That close. Two feet under the ice. <laughs> One or two that are a little bigger in the slot. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh! Projection. <laughs> Just this past month in November, uh, we had a report of a 12, a 17, and an 18 pound tiger trout in one month. And that's just what we hear. So um, something's happening right now, which Schofield is producing some monstrous tiger trout. Oh, look at this, Robert. Come here. Robert, come here. Quick, quick, quick. Come here. The cutthroat are, are really nice, too. They're up into eight, nine pounds. Big old cutty. You better bring him up, dude. I don't know. This, James. This past fall, well, we did our uh, gill netting uh, sampling throughout the lake and had a lot of nice cutthroat in the, in the nets. A lot of fish that were in the 20 inch range that were five pounds. I mean, big, 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 big cutthroat. He's 20, 20 inches. 20 inches, just 20, under. 21, 21 inches. inches. He's got to go back, right? Two under 15, one over 22. Anything 15 to 22, you got to throw back. Hey, something new that kind of came out just the last couple of years. It's called the jaw jacker. It's kind of for the guy that's a little lazy, right? Kind of like Greg, my buddy. <laughs> no, man, I got I got the two pole permit going. I got a pole over there, and then I got the jaw jacker baby sitting my other pole. Show people how this works. Well, basically, the it's got a little ring that sits on the end here, and uh, you just hook it up to a little trigger here. What have you guys caught them on today? Uh, we've been using the Maniac cutter bugs, been working really good with those vertigo jigs. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, some little ice flies, little glow in the dark ice flies, wax worms. Uh, we've been putting a little bit of. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, as we're talking. Did you catch him? Nice. Oh, yeah. That's a nice. little better. Nice. There you go. Kind of takes the fun out of it, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Fishing's fishing and catching <laughs> is catching. I like. Isn't hooking part of it though? No. How many times have you had two poles set up? Oh, there's another bite. No, oh, that one at least you can hook. Oh yeah, you're right. He does need a jaw jacker. <laughs> Anything in the, a white color, tube jig, spoons. Um, that seems to be the key. Um, and chub meat. Um, it seems to be that the larger fish, if you're dead sticking a, just a half a chub or a piece of shiner and, uh, or a big tube jig with a piece of chub meat on it, that's been the key to get, uh, catching the larger fish. Big fish on the line, huh? Here we go, big fish, big cut, be a big tiger. This is a good one. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Biggest one I've caught all day. Only one I've caught all day. <laughs> a few things to remember if you plan on fishing Schofield this year. Don't forget the slot limit. Any cutthroat or tiger trout caught between 15 and 22 inches must be immediately released. And you know, the first few weeks after a reservoir has safe ice can be some of the most productive fishing, but it also can be one of the more dangerous times of the year to fall through the ice. So always go with a friend and drill a few test holes if you're uncertain about the thickness of the ice.
Coming up on KSL Outdoors. Well, right now, you know, the reservoir's being overrun by Utah Chubs. A new proposal by the DWR to stop stocking rainbows at Schofield that should, in the future, lead to fewer Chubs. That just ahead, but first, tonight's Burt Brothers quiz question. The tiger trout is a sterile hybrid trout produced by crossing a female brown trout with a male brook trout. Because they are sterile, all of their energy goes towards feeding, allowing these fish to grow larger and faster. Schofield holds the current Utah record catch and keep with a fish caught by Jake Train that tipped the scales at 19 pounds, 2 ounces. Jake's fish is just 1 pound, 13 ounces away from beating the world record that has stood for 35 years. Our Burt Brothers quiz question tonight is, according to the International Game Fish Association, Peter Friedland caught this 20 pound, 13 ounce tiger trout back in 1978, but where did he catch it? Now, once you know the answer, find KSL Outdoors on Facebook, look for our contest link, click it, give us the name of the lake, and you'll be entered to win a Goal Zero Guide 10 Plus mobile kit from our friends over Goal Zero. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, we'll be right back. There he is. Big one, small one, what do you got? Oh, there's your oh, rainbow you wanted. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he was just saying he hadn't got any rainbows. Yeah, we were just talking about not catching rainbows, and there he is. Ever since I was a kid, I always remember coming to Schofield for its fantastic rainbow trout fishery. But a few years ago, biologists noticed that the reservoir was being overrun with chubs. So they started stocking Bear Lake cutthroat and a hybridized brown and brook trout called a tiger trout. The reason? Well, these fish are more piscivorous, meaning they eat other fish once they grow to a certain size. The hope was to keep more of these fish alive by introducing the slot limit, requiring anglers to release these fish if they fell between 15 and 22 inches. And this year, biologists will be trying an additional technique. What we did this past, this past year, we went through all the racks in the wildlife board, presenting a proposal to discontinue stocking rainbow trout for three to five years and just so we can double our cutthroat trout uh, stocking efforts in the reservoir and hope we can control the Utah chub population biologically. This by, doesn't mean you're not going to ever stop rainbows. No, no, no. It, it, hopefully here in about five, five, you know, three to five years, we can start putting rainbows back in and we've pushed the chub population back far enough that the rainbows can, you know, then start surviving and competing against the Utah chubs and uh, uh, continue to grow in the reservoir. Right now, they've just appeared. Um, we dumped uh, our last uh, 80,000 or so this, this fall, so there are some out there this spring and then through the ice fishing right now we can catch, but uh, probably in the next few years you're going to see fewer and fewer rainbows, uh, more cutthroat, more tiger trout, um, but we're trying to do that to control the chub populations and, and keep us from having to treat the reservoir. That sounds like a pretty good idea to me. I mean, um, you got to do something to get rid of those chubs, and the rainbows aren't helping that out any. Although the rainbows are pretty good to eat too, though. There he is. Yeah. Nice. Two feet down. I'm here for more of the sport. You know, I do like to eat uh, some fish, but the tug is the drug. If you're looking for another reason to come to Schofield other than the fast fishing, how about an excuse like the annual Schofield Derby happening next Saturday? State Park is sponsoring the Derby again on the 28th of uh, December. It's a Saturday, and I know the registration is open right now. If you go to the the uh, State Park's website, there's information on there about the Derby, and I believe they're going to limit it to 200 participants, okay. like they did last year. Ah, we got him. Mickey is catching fish after fish. He was finding them about two to three feet under the ice, while James was doing better near the bottom. James believes to have a better chance at catching more fish, you should use a fish finder to see what depth they're coming in at. He also says some of the bigger fish he caught last year, he was using a bigger bait. Big bait, big fish, they say, right? I caught a lot of my bigger fish last year through the ice on this two and a half inch cutter bus. You might not see anything on the sonar or be getting any bites, you put on a bigger bait, especially a glow lure. This is orange glow. You'll get hours of glow time out of this. And it attracts them and then, Surprisingly enough, even the little ones try to eat it. There he is. It brought him in. And all I had to do is bounce it to get him to eat it. Took a couple of times. Get it a couple of times before I actually took him. So even though you're not going to see as many rainbows here, you'll see more tiger trout and cutthroat, and hopefully fewer chubs in the future. Nice catch, dude. Right. Not too bad, huh? Orange cutter bug. Yeah, orange cutter bug. Good the job. <laughs> hey, let's head over to Mickey now. He's down the ice for tonight's fish deck fish report. 
I love this time of year. It's the only time you can do a snow angel and ice fish. I'm Mickey Anderson, your snow angel, with this week's fishing report. Ice fishing is a lot of fun, but staying warm and dry is key to staying out on the ice, especially when you're bringing little guys like Gavin. All this starts when you're back at the truck. When you're driving up, your feet are going to perspire and your socks are going to get a little bit damp. Change your socks when you get to the ice. And a lot of times when you go ice fishing, there's slush on top, your feet are going to get wet. I like waterproof boots that are waterproof from the top to the bottom. When you're releasing fish, your gloves are going to get really wet. Brush that snow off and have a towel handy. This towel can suck a lot of the moisture out of your gloves to help keep them warm. When they get too wet, replace them with a dry glove. Your hands are going to stay a lot warmer. I kneel a lot when I'm on the ice. When you're down here, you're going to get your knees wet. So I like to kneel on a PFD. This way I have a comfortable kneeling cushion and I have a cushion that I can throw to somebody that might need help. Now with my bait, I like to keep my wax worms warm. I put them in an ice pack, keep them warm, but I like to keep my minnows frozen. A frozen minnow is a lot easier to handle than when they thaw out. So to keep your hands warm and your fish cold, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. And now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on Schofield Reservoir. I'm Adam Eco. You know, many of you have probably heard of KSL's drive during the holiday season, been doing it for decades. It's called KSL's Quarters for Christmas. It's where people get a chance to give back to those in need. The young man right there behind me, six-year-old Gavin Robbins, has taken it to a new height, raised a few hundred bucks that turned into well over a thousand. Come on back. There, did you get him? Yes, you did. Yeah! <laughs> Fun. <laughs> this is Gavin Robbins, the boy who got into the Christmas spirit by helping out KSL's Quarters for Christmas. We were driving down the road and listening to Doug Wright and Gavin, he came on about the Quarters for Christmas and I just asked him if he wanted to do it and he said yes. Yeah. So the next day at Thanksgiving dinner, he passed a little cup around and asked everybody for some money. He just started taking it everywhere he went, asking everybody he saw. and. We told him we'd match whatever he collected and got a little bit scary there for a little bit towards the end when seeing how much he had. And In just two weeks, Gavin collected 220 bucks. With mom and dad's match, he had $440 that he came in and presented to the Doug Wright Show. Yeah, he was on Monday morning with Doug Wright. And we got to talk for 10 minutes or so on the radio with him and then they had some people call in and matched what he had donated. Really? He had two people call in and match what he had donated, so there's the 1300 and whatever it come out to be total. Why did you decide to do the quarters for Christmas? Because I thought kids would need it. Obviously you're raising him right, though, with a good heart. Um, I think we're doing pretty good. Glad you came out ice fishing with us. You have a good time? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> good job, kid. Go catch another one. Hey, while well, Gavin here is back at fishing, let's check out this week's edition of our Utah Field Guide. Hey guys, for tonight's Utah Field Guide, we wanted to bring you some last minute Christmas gift ideas for the sportsmen in your family, set to the tune of the 12 Days of Christmas, brought to you by some 12 somewhat reluctant employees at Sportsman's Warehouse. Enjoy. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 drummers drumming on my goal zero rock out speakers. On the 11th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 11 bulls are calling on my power bugle. On the 10th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 10 lords are leaping in my sweet can of trek boots. On the 9th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 9 dancing ladies with their cute pink ugly stick rods. On the 8th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Eight maids are milking on my hoochie mama elk call. Seven circles and fish. Six decoys lay. Five loophole gold rings. Four calling beards. Three French hens. Two boxer shells. And a bow hunter in a tree stand. 
Okay, so with only three more shopping days until Christmas, all five Utah locations will be there for you. Christmas Eve, we're open eight to four. From all of us at Sportsman's Warehouse, we wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas. Man, Mickey, it has gotten warm here. I bet it's 35 degrees out here. It's so nice. Those poor people down in the inversion, I'll bet they're freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty nice. Get up here and go ice fishing, especially on a bluebird day like today. The weather is fantastic. Let's find out how cold it is in the valley by turning over the guys and gals on the weather department. Thanks, Adam. Actually, as we get ready to move throughout the weekend, we've been dealing with round after round of snow, but they haven't all been the same type of snow. Now, we did get a break heading into the day on Friday and actually got to see some sunshine. Gorgeous picture right there sent in by Ray. But snow density, this is very important, especially for folks that are going to be outdoors. Normally, like the snow we saw heading into the weekend, 10 to 1, 10 inches of snow for 1 inch of water. The good snow, the fluffy stuff we like to see, 20 to 1, that's what we saw last week when temperatures are a little colder. But the 5 to 1 snow, that's what we saw on Thursday. Temperatures are warmer. That's where you get the het, heavy, heavy, dense snow, and that's what creates issues, especially with avalanche concerns. So that's something to keep in mind for the next week or so. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eco will be back right after this. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Back here on the ice at Schofield. I'm Adam Eagle. Hey, don't forget, if you're looking for some ideas to get your family and friends out on the ice this year, maybe for some ice fishing tournaments, you can always find that and much more right there on our outdoors calendar page at ksltv.com. Time now to turn it over to outdoors producer Jared Hargrave as he introduces us to tonight's Backcountry Trail. This week, we're backcountry skiing on South Mountain in the LaSalle Mountains, just outside of Moab. I, uh... I was glad I made it up there. It was nice and warm, sunny day, so yeah, it was awesome. Snow-covered roads mean South Mountain is a remote destination, so getting to the top from the LaSalle Creek Winter Trailhead is an all-day tour. It was long, probably the, one of the longer ones I've ever done, I think. But all that uphill work is rewarded on the summit. The views are out of this world. You know, you see the red rocks below you, the abalos in the distance, and, and some of the other uh, LaSalle's on the other side. So it's really beautiful, beautiful views. And skiing back down, we found a cold stash of powder snow and shady pines. Kind of stayed right near the trees, and uh, it turned out to be really nice snow. As long as we hugged the trees, we had a long, beautiful turn. So, you know, it's always fun to get powder in your face, into your beard. <laughs> get some beard shots. <laughs> Man, South Mountain was not easy to get to, but once we got to the top, the views were totally worth it. And the ski down, primo. Of course, if you go in the backcountry, don't forget your beacon probe and shovel, and of course, check the avalanche report at utahavalanchecenter.org. And now back to Adam for the snapshot of the week. We kick it off right where we left off, Schofield Reservoir. Darren had a great day of fishing just before the ice cap covered the reservoir. He says it was a cold day, but hot fishing. Here he is posing with this 27 inch cutthroat he caught in a snowstorm. 12 year old Sam Orton enjoys out fishing his father with a fly rod. Not only did he catch the biggest fish, he did it on a fly that he created. It's a tradition that you cannot name your fly in the Orton family until you prove it can catch fish. Sam said, I think I'll call this one the hot tamale after hooking into this monster. Father and son, Dan and Duke Cassidy, had a great fishing trip to Huntington Reservoir just at first ice. This is one of several two and a half pound tiger trout that they landed that day. Dan says Duke loves to fish with his old man. The Seat family spent Thanksgiving weekend in Florida and were able to spend a day fishing on the Atlantic Ocean. Skyler caught this 40 pound redfish. Stockton reeled in this Atlantic sharp nosed shark, but it was Sage who caught the most fish. Here he is posing with a Spanish mackerel. Check out the beautiful brown trout Scott shows off on a fall fishing trip to southern Wyoming. He says he caught three brown trout all over six pounds, but this 10 pounder was the most beautiful fish he's ever caught in 18 years of fly fishing. But our winner tonight endured two surgeries in three days, but didn't let it dampen his outdoors experience. Jace Farnsworth finally drew his Fish Lake limited entry elk tag, and just a couple of months before his premium hunt started, Jace had to undergo two back surgeries. He was unable to even walk for a month. His first trip out of the house, he told his dad that he wanted to go fishing, and he landed this monster mac at Fish Lake. 
Several weeks later, he called this great bull out of a big canyon to within 75 yards and punched his tag on this beautiful 6x7. A great year despite the pain. Well, Jace, I hope you're feeling better. Here's our Get Well gift as you just won our Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures and a brief explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef two-burner Explorer stove. Portability and power from our friends over at Camp Chef. From the ice of the Great Salt Lake to the beaches of Lake Powell, no matter what your family tradition, Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Well, I know I caught a big zero. I was working, but you guys caught a few. <laughs> <laughs> it was great fish, and everybody here caught a lot of fish today. Yeah, we saw rainbows, cuts, tigers, and a chub. And a chub. Kill the chub. <laughs> and I know you caught a couple. Yeah, I caught two or three. Yeah, but we know there's big ones here. We got to come back. Yeah, there's big ones in here. We caught a lot of fish today, a lot of small ones, but you'll pick a big one up. Hey, in there. the one you caught, that 21 inch fish, the derby that's coming next week, that could win big prizes, right? All right. I'll Better come out here. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Make some more memories, right? Yes. Good definitely. deal. That's what it's all about, getting out with your buddies, your friends, and making memories on the ice. Make sure you do the same this year. I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors for Mickey, for James, for all the crew. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.